Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to give you my full review on the Hoka One One Challenger ATR5. All right, so as you can see, these are filthy. <laughs> so I have put uh, a lot of miles in these now. I've put over, uh, over 120 miles in these shoes probably. And most of that 101.44 miles to be exact was from the No Business 100. I wore these during the entire No Business. Did not change shoes once, didn't change socks. Uh, as you can see, they still got mud on them from the race. Uh, you know, I haven't cleaned them, uh, but they did, they did awesome in the race. They did so well. The trails were pretty technical in places and the shoes did great. Plenty of cushioning. You know, there was, there is no rock plate in these, but even without the rock plate, my feet were fine. I didn't have any uh, really fatigued and sore feet from 100 miles, which was fantastic. I do have some bruising in my left foot, but that's from when I rolled my ankle, not from rocks or, or hard surfaces. All in all, I will highly recommend these shoes for a 100 mile race. Uh, absolutely, they, they did great. So the Challenger ATR5 is a highly cushioned trail shoe. It's suitable for a broad type of terrain. Uh, like I said, I use it on single track trail and also gravel. Uh, you know, pretty technical trails and also some that were not technical and it did great in all conditions. Uh, it's really held up well. So the outsole of the Challenger ATR5 was updated from the ATR4. It was updated for better traction and a smoother, more consistent ride uh, is what Hoka says and I would agree with that. I ran in the ATR3s and these definitely felt better than those. The midsole and the upper are slightly redesigned but they do maintain a similar ride and feel as the previous generation. So if you like the other shoes, you're gonna like these as well. So the Challenger ATR5 has a lightweight compression molded EVA foam. So it is, it does have a lightweight midsole. It still offers plenty of cushioning. Uh, it does have a dual layer mesh upper, which I can attest is very breathable. Uh, and it also allowed the shoe to dry well once I went through creek crossings. I went through several creek crossings in the race and then, you know, continued to run and the shoe did dry out completely. Uh, and it wasn't left with wet feet. So it breathed well and part of that helped it dry. So. Big plus. It does have an internal heel counter. It's pretty stiff in the in the heel, uh, but it did allow for a pretty good lockdown. I did utilize the runner's knot on these, and it did allow pretty good lockdown. Felt secure in the heel, but didn't feel like it was slipping around. Along the upper here, it does have a toe cap, which you can see here, and the uh, outsole comes up a little bit, and then this engineered overlay as well provides some durability. But this does help prevent rocks when you hit that toe into a rock it does prevent a little bit of uh, damage to your foot just a little bit so that is a nice nice thing to consider as well the only issue that i had with the upper of the shoe in the whole race was uh, my fault i had the shoe tied too tightly and the laces were rubbing into my heel and it created some uh, a raw spot I, I had to stop and tape the top of my foot and then loosen the laces a little bit when I retied them, and it was not an issue from then on. So uh, the tongue is padded, which is nice, uh, but I just had it tied a little bit too tightly, so just be careful with that. And the tongue is also semi-gusseted, so that's very nice as well. Rounding out the outsole of the ATR5 is what they call a podular design on the lugs, and they're four millimeter in depth. As you can see, they, uh, you know, they're not as aggressive as say a speed go, but they do uh, provide plenty of adequate traction. I was very pleased with the traction of these modular four millimeter lugs. They did great. So these are a five millimeter drop. You got 31 millimeters in the rear, 26 in the front. And this is according to Running Warehouse's website. So there has been some discrepancies in the past between Running Warehouse and the Hoka manufacturer website. When I went to look this up, the Mandy Hoka website was actually down. It wasn't loading. So uh, I'm just gonna go with those. So 31 in the rear, 26 in the front, five millimeter dip. One slightly odd thing that I noticed was when, when I weighed the shoes, as you can see here, one of the shoes was 10.7 ounces and the other one was 10.6 ounces. So and this was brand new. This was before I'd put any miles on the shoe. A little bit of difference there in weight, don't know why. But all in all, a decent weight for a, for a shoe. For a shoe that you wanna use 100 miles, it's pretty good. Uh, you know, it does have that early stage meta rocker to kind of give you some of that helpful helpful toe off a little bit in uh, propulsion. So uh, it's a good shoe. I'm, I was very, very happy and pleased with these. Very glad that I bought them and chose to wear them uh, at the 100 mile race and for that distance specifically. So I was concerned about the speed goats that I have because I had an issue with them kind of chewing up my heel a little bit last time I wore them. Uh, these, no issues at all. Like I said, I just tied the laces too tight. Had I not done that, there would have been nothing to say about this at all. And that was, that was my error. It was a user error. So fantastic shoe. If you're looking for a trail shoe that can do everything, you know, crushed gravel, uh, greenways, if you're running between a greenway and a trail, 
Uh, if you want to hit the uh, hit a muddy trail, this does pretty decent. You know, if it's really muddy, yeah, you're going to want something a little more aggressive. But uh, all in all, this is a very versatile trail shoe. Uh, and it is on sale right now at Running Warehouse. So you can go check it out there also. I'm, I'm, I'm not sponsored by Running Warehouse, but if you want to, send me an email. I just, I just love these shoes. I buy my stuff from Running Warehouse. Uh, I like their return policy. But anyway... Give them a shout, give them, uh, give them a try if you're looking for a trail shoe that you can use in a variety of situations. All right, well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, if you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up on the video. I would appreciate it. It really does help this video continue to get seen. And also, if you have not already, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And remember to hit the little bell so you'll get notifications when I release future videos like this gear review and other gear review videos or maybe some trail running footage or uh, some rehab of an of a injured ankle. So anyway, thanks for checking this out. I hope you found some value to it and I will see you on the next one.